Hello guys, I trust you well. Welcome to this channel and thanks so much for visiting. My name is Hari Kipkemoibet. Uh, today I'd like to share about publish or perish. I have a great interest in um, publishing and research generally. I'm a PhD candidate at the moment, PhD candidate in communication to be specific. My first degree is in education, my second one in education management and currently PhD, as I've said, in communication. Um, because of the great interest I have and the publications I've done, I thought it wise to share some practical tips that have worked for me, but also that are being used by other scholars or academics in publishing. Now, when I talk about um, peer-reviewed journals, I'm talking about credible ones like Springer, like Emerald, Elsevier, Taylor & Francis, Sage journals, among many others. And um, I have published in some of these and I've gathered some tips that I thought are useful and I could share with you so, so that you could try them and see if, how, how they work. Uh, for example, this paper that published with a professor friend of mine in 2018, and this is on um, Facebook and teachers professional development. Now, like I said, my area is education actually education and communication so um, this is a Taylor and francis paper and if you can see you know the time it was received at the time of acceptance almost a, a one-year period but also because there were quite a number of comments to be addressed uh the next example i have a second one which is an open access paper the first one was wasn't open access you have to pay so that you can access unless you access through your institution now this second one <clears throat> He's also published with some friends of mine, a professor friend of mine and a colleague. And this is a Springer paper. So it is possible to publish in this. And these are just examples. You can actually check out my Google Scholar profile, um, the homepage of, our, of the channel. You can see other papers that I have also published. So what are some of the tips that you can use to publish your papers? Uh, the first one that I have seen work is responding to call for papers or book chapters. Now journals from time to time will send out, send out calls, call for papers, call for book chapters, and they'll give specifications, they will give time period when they want these publications or these um, submissions to be done. Most of the time they'll ask you to send an abstract first uh, within this period of time, maybe a 200, page, um, 200 word uh, <clears throat> abstract or 300 word, something like that. And once it's accepted, then you're given maybe like two months or three months to submit the final manuscript. So it's actually possible even if you have not, uh, you do not have a manuscript at the moment, to just begin looking for code for papers in your area or specialization and begin drafting a paper and you can, and you will end up actually stand a higher chance of publishing. Now, one of the ways or one of the reasons for me why I think it's easier to publish in responding to code for papers is because many times, one, people do not look out for these calls, so they do not have, uh, they do not end up getting as many papers as they would, or many mass manuscripts or many submissions. Secondly, <clears throat> it's also because of the time period. People think, well, within three months, can I really pull out something, or two months, or six months? They think it's such a short time, but in reality, you can you can do something within that period, given period of time. So it's not always an assumption. You shouldn't always assume that it's looking for people who already have manuscripts. You can actually start from scratch. So that is the first strategy that I've seen work. I have used it. Uh, the next one is, uh, sorry for that. The next strategy or tip that I have used is targeting new journals. Now look at that example of Discover Journal Series by Springer. This is what I just checked out when I was preparing for this presentation. And many other journals also would have new journals. In fact, on the homepage, or if you just search for it, new journals, Ten and Francis, new journals, Emerald, they, they will direct you to where the new journals are. And if it's a journal within your area, this is also another strategy that would work. I keep thinking that like businesses, like all other businesses, new journals will always be eager to have submissions and to publish papers. So they are likely, uh, because of course they're eager also to begin making a name for themselves as compared to uh, older established journals, then they're likely, uh, you know, probably their standard may not be as high 
as the others. Not that they're going to accept shoddy work, but their standards are likely to be um, lower than the more established journals. So this might as well be uh, something you can target and maybe you can try it out and see how it works. The third one is uh, volunteering as a peer reviewer. I have volunteered, I think for the last probably seven years, now I have been working as a reviewer from time to time, not really reg regularly, sometimes once a month, sometimes once um, in two months, but it all depends. Of course, they'll always ask you, they'll always ask you, are you available to review? So, you'll, I mean, if you have the time, you will accept. So in fact, for me, one of the, one of the things that I do when I submit a paper for publication, normally in the submission process, they'll always ask you, would you like to volunteer as a, as a reviewer? I normally, I always check that box and say, yes, I'd like to volunteer. Uh, because again, for papers to be published, we need peer reviewers and most journals do not pay for this. So uh, if they also see the willingness that you have in supporting them, then it also becomes, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. So it also becomes an opportunity for you to stand a better chance to be accepted as, a, as, as an offer within that journal. And also other reasons are that you, you will also learn what your colleagues or your peers are doing. That's why we call it peer review, because you, you can see what also, I mean, we're inviting peers, yes, people in the same field, but also you can see what your peers are publishing in which areas, what is new and things like that. So you, you're kept updated. That's a third strategy that I have used and it works. Uh, also, before you publish, what's interesting about your work? Is it the population and the sample? Some populations are hardly considered. So should you have a study that you have done that considers this, uh, such kind of a population, make sure you shout about it. Let's not be humble, humble in quotes, yeah? Let's not be humble about our work, uh, belittling what we have done. If it is a context that is unique, make sure you sing about it. If it is the research results, you know, let the whole world know that, well, probably out of the five objectives, only one or half of one, <laughs> There's something that just stands out. So sing about it, create a paper out of that half, half, half an objective of, or one objective. Or probably it is the triangulation of data or triangulation of methods or even of analysis. So because you have taken this approach where you have used these methods, make sure you create, you know, you create some fuss around it, let me say so. Uh, make sure this one stands out for the academic world so that even editors as they receive, they look at it and they think, yeah, there's something that we that is worth consideration in this particular manuscript. Uh, number five tip, the second last one, is also is picking the right journal. Now I know many people their their manuscripts get rejected because their manuscript and the journals are not compatible. So all the time before you do a submission, please check the scope. Look at even some of the sample papers they have published. You know, and if it's a new journal they have never published before, just look at the scope. What kind of papers are they looking for? What is the word count and things like that. So compatibility is very important. And lastly, collaboration. Collaborate. Collaborate with people who've already published. If you've not, uh, collaborate with your professors and your supervisors or your advisors, uh, because they already know. Uh, you know, they know the the ropes. They know the the way how to get published and things like that. They, they understand the logistics about publication. But also I have a feeling that sometimes editors, when they are weighing whether to accept or not, sometimes they look also at, uh, is this person, does this person understand what they're doing? And when they look at, you, at least you're working with someone seasoned, you know, a professor who already understands this field, then it's easy. And I've seen friends who have actually uh, published and they have co-published with their professors and all that, and it works. So collaboration becomes even a better strategy uh, to get published. So consider these tips. I don't know what you think. Do you have any other tip that maybe you think has, has or you not you think, but has worked for you or you think could work? Please share that in the comments. And like I said at the beginning, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing more videos on other aspects of uh, thesis and dissertation writing as well as publishing. And I hope this will be useful to you. Thanks so much. Most welcome. Harik Kemoebet is my name. Cheers.